What's up? Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing well. You look good. You, you're you're glowing. Um, in this video, we're going to go over some things in Affinity Photo you may not know if you're new to Affinity Photo or if you've been using it for a little while that I think you'll find helpful. And if you watch this video and you say, I knew that stuff, you know what? Just, just straight out lie. Just lie in the comments and say, wow, I didn't know any of this. You're a genius. That would be really helpful. I'd appreciate that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is reset our studio back to default, just in case your screen doesn't look like mine. And to do that, we're gonna go up to Window, Studio, and click Reset Studio. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is noise. Not that kind of noise. Noise in Affinity Photo. Now here's the thing, we'll do a quick example, but I just have this uh, white fill layer here, just this blank canvas. And if I go to my color tab up in the top here, you see I have opacity here, which is the transparency. So I could like move this down, right? And you see the white disappearing. Or I could move this one down and it would start to fade, right? But if you click this little button here, this little hidden button here, it says switch. And when you click on that, it switches to noise. Now, if I pull this all the way up, if you look at the background, if I zoom in here, you see it gets kind of like gritty. And so that's, I'm going to turn it down and back up. So it makes this kind of gritty well, noise, really. So let me just do a quick example here. So we're going to pull that back. There's no noise on that. Let's grab some text. I'm going to write out the word uh, super because this is super. Uh, let's just center that right there. Perfect. And now I'm going to duplicate this text. If you don't know how to duplicate a layer in Affinity Photo, on a Mac, it is Command J. On a PC, it's Control J. So now I have text underneath. I'm going to make that text yellow. And I'm just going to pull it out a little bit to make it look 3D. I'm going to duplicate the text again. And I'm going to make it like a pinky kind of red. I'm going to pull that out to make it kind of 3D-ish. So it looks like that. Cool. Looks awesome. Um, but let's add some noise. So let's go to the fill layer. Let's go back up to noise here. And let's pull this up so it looks a little bit gritty. Now I'm going to go to the yellow text. Back to noise. I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to go to the pink text. Noise. I'm going to pull that up. And I'll do that for the black text as well. And I'll zoom in here so you can see it. So now if you look, all these look a little bit gritty. Now let's do one more thing. Let's grab the text on the top and we can do, we could flip back opacity here. I can go back to opacity or I could just go right here and I'm just going to fade it a little bit. So I'm going to fade the black. I'm going to fade the yellow and I'm going to fade the pink. So now it looks kind of like retro-y. Now it has some grit on it and it's a little bit faded. So now you went from a bright, um, vibrant sort of text to now a more subtle, faded, retro style um, by using the noise button. So that's how we're getting started. It's a we get noisy. Okay. No, can't use that. Shouldn't probably delete it. May keep it. Did you hear this? Okay. Let's move. <laughs> let's move on. Okay. So let's talk about paint brushes now and how to make them a little bit more unique. Now you can grab your paintbrush from your toolbox over here by clicking on this icon or hitting B on your keyboard. And when you do that, you have some options by default to change. You can change the size of your brush here. You can change the transparency, uh, the flow, and the hardness up here. Or you can pick a totally new brush by going over to your brush panel right here, clicking on that, and picking a new brush. Now, if I were to draw this out, it would just look pretty standard, just kind of like that. But we can add some stuff to this to make it a little bit different. Let's first try this symmetry option up here. So if I check this off, I have an option here to go from 1 to 16. Let's do 1 for now. And you'll see if I start to draw, this thing kind of just follows me around, right? Giving me some kind of cool, unique look depending on whatever I'm drawing. If I up this symmetry to four, it gets a little bit more interesting. If I start to draw out, you can see it kind of does this, which is pretty cool. So let's just grab some text here and let's draw, let's write the word flower, sure. And let's center this. Let's find this thing's chi like this. There we go. Now, if I go back to my brush and let's up the symmetry, maybe this time to, let's say eight. And I start to draw it out. I'll get this kind of cool, unique look. So now we have this based off one change on the paintbrush by just changing the symmetry. Um, you can bring it up to 16. You can also mirror this. And this is going to look different depending on whatever brush you use. So if you're using a different kind of a, a crazy looking brush, a cloud brush or something different, it's going to look totally different uh, depending on the brush you're using. So you're kind of unlimited in your creativity there. Uh, let's go back to the brush settings. Let's turn symmetry off. And if I draw this out, you'll see it's just a standard line again. But if I go up to this button up here called more, the more button to click on that, I can change how this brush looks drastically. Um, I can change the size of things there, but you'll see here in the preview, if I start moving the spacing around, I can make it look different that way. I can go to dynamics and I can change this here. I can just move all these sliders around to kind of make this brush look totally different. So now if I close this and I start to draw with this brush, 
Now this brush looks like this, totally, totally different. And again, depending on the brush you're using, it's going to look completely different. So with your paint brush, try messing around with the symmetry at the top here. Try going to the more button and changing to different brushes to see what it looks like. And that's how you can make some more creative stuff using your paint brushes in Affinity Photo. Okay, so let's talk about importing some Photoshop files into Affinity Photo. If you didn't know, Affinity Photo can work with Photoshop files and can also export your files as Photoshop files. Now, there's a setting change you got to make, which until you do that, you may not be able to use it completely properly. I have this mock-up right here of this book cover. And if I wanted to go in and change the book cover, I should be able to click on this and edit it. But if I don't make a change, it won't allow me to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up to your Affinity Photo settings on my Mac here. I'm going to go here. And you need to make sure this is checked off here. Import PSD smart objects where possible. If I click on this and allow that setting to go, I can now go to my cover. I could double click on this and I could change this to whatever I want it. I'm just going to do a quick shape here so you can see what this looks like. Let's make it this thing and I'll put a circle just so we know. Well, let's put a triangle. Sure. And let's make it this color. There we go. Wow. What a book cover. Let's go back here. And another thing too about Affinity Photo is you're going to see that preview right there live. And a lot of times in Photoshop, when you're in the embedded document, you actually have to save it before you can see the change. In Affinity Photo, the change pops up automatically. So now that I made that setting change, I can now, anything I pull in that's a PSD, a Photoshop file, I'm able to go in and edit the smart objects just as, just as I would in Photoshop. Bam, that's a good one right there. Photoshop, what's up? What's up now, Photoshop? Uh, okay, let's move on. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about adjustments having built-in masks. Now, if you don't know what masks are, I'm going to link my full video down below. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about masking. Somebody saw it once and they said, this is the greatest video I've ever seen on masking on YouTube. I don't remember who said it. It could, might have been me, but uh, yeah, that's not important. If you need to know about masking, check that video down below. The main idea behind masking is you can hide things or bring them back by painting in black and white. Now, let's just start with kind of an extreme example. I'm going to select my car in my layers panel. I'm going to go down to my adjustments right here. And when I click on that, I get all these options. The first one I'm going to do is called a recolor adjustment, which is going to turn my photo all one color. So let's click on that. And it's going to go red by default. And you can see now in my layers panel, I have recolor adjustment that's popped up here. And I can move this slider around to make it whatever color I want. Now, the cool thing here is with my recolor adjustment selected, because there's a built-in mask, I can go to my paintbrush over here or hit B on my keyboard. And if I want to paint in black, I can erase what I've done. So I can just start painting away that blue effect. Now, the way my brush is set up, so in the top left corner, the opacity, the flow, the hardness, and the actual brush I'm using is going to affect how it looks. But let's just say I painted the sky away like this. And I say I went a little bit too far and I didn't mean to paint down here. Well, now I can just go back to my color panel. I can paint in white and I can paint that adjustment back on like that. This is kind of an extreme example. So let's just do something else. Let me delete this. And with my car selected now, I'm going to go back down to my adjustments. And this time I'm going to pick exposure. And when I do that, you can see the exposure adjustment pops up in my layers panel. If I move this slider, it's going to go up. It's going to look like it's getting brighter, but you can see as I do it, the sky is kind of getting blown out. The clouds are disappearing and maybe I want to keep the sky the same. So in this case, I have my exposure set here. I'm going to go with my paintbrush, hit B on my keyboard. I'm going to paint in black because I want to hide this effect that I put on, on the sky. So when I start to do that, I can paint the sky back in just like this. So the sky looks more normal, kind of like this. And if I turn the effect off in the layers panel by toggling on and off, you can see, oh, let me get that part right there. You can see that the sky doesn't really change because I've, I've removed the effect off of it. And again, if I wanted to bring the sky back, I can paint in white and I could just paint back the effect back in. So masks being built into adjustments, super powerful. Just know you paint in black to hide the effect, white to bring it back. And the brush you're using, the opacity, the flow, the hardness is all going to affect how that mask looks. Okay, next up, we're talking about blend options. Now in this actual file, I have a wall in the background and I have this graphic on front that says, according to my calculations, this man is dead. Now I could, with this selected, go up to my blend modes, which are right here. And this is some presets on how these two will interact with each other. If I go through them, you can see a preview of what each of them does. But there's also an option here called blend options to the right, this little gear wheel. And it's kind of like Photoshop's blend if. If I click on this here, I have it in and out down here, and I can click on these and drag them down and around to see 
how they're going to actually interact with each other. I can add nodes and drag them down here. I can go over here. So if your blend modes aren't exactly what you're looking for, you can't really dial it in. You can try your blend options and mess with these sliders and see if you can find what you're looking for with the blend options. Okay, next up, we're talking about live filter layers. It's how to edit things non-destructively so you can always go back and change them. Now, I've got this text here that says cool. And say I wanted to put like a mesh warp or a perspective on it. I could go to my toolbox on the left here and there's a mesh warp option and a perspective option. So say I click on mesh warp, then I start moving this guy around and just editing a little bit. And then when I was done, I could either hit enter or I could hit apply in the top left corner. And then say I went to go do something else, like I drew a, a triangle or something like that. And then I went back to alter this text and I clicked on it. I now can't go backwards. What I've already edited is now is set in stone. So I can't uh, edit it and go back and change it. The, the effect has already been made. So this is a destructive way of working, which you don't want to do. So let's just go back. Let's erase that. And now with this text selected, I'm going to use a live filter to do this. So I can do it in two different places. I can go down here to the bottom of the layers panel and I click on live filters. And there's a big list of all the live filters down here. And I could also go up to layer, new live filter layer and select it from here. So in this case, I'm going to go distort. I'm going to pick mesh warp and I can start moving this around and editing it. And when I'm done, I can hit enter or hit um, done in the top left corner. And then say I went on to do something else, like draw out a triangle. Now, because I've done this with a live filter layer, if I go to the text, I can see underneath there is a mesh warp right here. If I click on it, now my mesh warp comes back and I can edit it further or revert it back. So any of your live filter layers, they're non-destructive. If you're going to do any uh, editing like that, use your live filter layers button here at the bottom of the layers panel or go up to layer new live filter layer and select your change and it's uh you can always change it later okay so just a couple quick one here quick bonus round of some few fast things here uh first of all transparent background if you're working in the document and it has this white background on it and you want to say just export these three triangles uh you could just go up to document and select transparent background and once you see a checkerboard that should mean your document is now transparent next up let's do a couple uh copying effects i have a red triangle selected here if I go down to my effects here at the bottom of my layers panel right here and I click on this and say I added some effects, let's give it uh, an outer shadow here and let's add, I don't know, maybe an outline. So now I have a shadow and an outline around this red triangle. Now say I wanted to copy the effects uh, the, on this red triangle to over to these other two triangles. I just go to the layers panel, I click on effects, click, drag it up, let it go, hold it, click, drag it up, let it go. And now the same effects have been copied over to these other two triangles, uh, depending on what I was uh, doing there. And the last thing I just want to talk about is X to swap colors. If you look at my colors in the top right corner, my uh, fill color is green and my outline strokey color is this kind of purpley blue. And I could swap these colors by hitting X. So if I go to my, say my paintbrush, for example, and I had the green selected at first and I were just do a paint stroke. If I hit X on my keyboard, it's automatically going to flip to that other color. If I hit X, it's going to flip back. If I hit X, it's going to flip back again. So X to swap colors. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please tap, tap, tap that like button. If you want to use all the brushes and overlays and a bunch of stuff I use in any of my videos, please check out my link below to support the channel. You can also join the community. Do what all those other YouTubers say. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.